Where were we? We were talking about your pen. Well, I'll tell you all about that after we get through with the last problem. Now, 8 times 8 is what? 64. And 9 times 8? David, what's 9 times 8? Uh, 72. Hello? Roger. Yes? I'm at the Blue Whale. I, I don't want... think we have anything to talk about, Burke. I'll expect you here in ten minutes. You can wait for ten hours, as far as I'm concerned. Don't be so abrupt, Roger. All I want is something of mine that you happen to have. And what's that? My fountain pen. You will bring it with you, won't you? faster than I thought. Nine minutes and 20 seconds. Just what is it you want, Burke? Sit down, will you, Roger? I want my pen. The one I gave Carolyn as a gift. You didn't approve. You took it from her. You said you would give it back to me. May I have it, please? I'm afraid not. Why not? I'm afraid I've lost it. Would you mind telling me where you lost it and when? Oh, Burke, this is nonsense. I'm sorry what happened, but I'll be glad to buy you another pen to replace it. Now, that's the best I can do. I think you can do better than that. What is this? I lost a fountain pen, that's all. It's not a major crime. Suppose I tell you where you lost it. What then? Well, I would say you were clairvoyant. It didn't occur to me until today, Roger. But when I thought of it, I went up to Lookout Point to see if I could find it. Lookout Point? Why there of all places? Because Carolyn told me you... You had that pen when you left your house. It was in your pocket. Because you met Bill Malloy at Lookout Point. You're mad. He received a phone call at 10.30 that night, Roger. It was probably from you. You told him to meet you at the Lookout Point to discuss calling off the meeting. He refused and you killed him. Burke, I'm desperately bored with this endless conversation. You want to stop it? Give me the pen. I have lost it. Well, if all you did that night was drive from your house to the office, then it shouldn't be difficult to find. It's probably in your car. I've already looked. I see. And you didn't find it there. That's right. Well, what do you suggest happened to it? What are you trying to do, Burke? Build some sort of a ridiculous murder case against me out of thin air? Or perhaps I should say out of some silver fountain pen? You're wasting your time, both yours and mine. Hello, George. What's going on here? I was talking to Roger about that pen. When are you going to come off it, Burke? You know, he just made me so mad a little while ago, I went out of here without paying my check. I would appreciate it if you would tell him to let me and my family alone. I've told you before, Burke, the Malloy case is closed, and that's final. Roger. All right, now, I want to tell you what I think. I think you lost that pen at Lookout Point and someone found it. I don't know who it was, but someone. And sooner or later, whoever has it is going to realize what it means. And then everything is going to come tumbling down around your head. All right, it's not too bad. You only had two mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Well, we'll go over those two tomorrow. Tell me the truth. Did you really find it? Yes, and it's not worth a thousand dollars. Hundred. I don't know. I doubt it. I wish I had a pen like that. 
Maybe I'll give it to you someday. You will? Really? You do your lessons and work hard. Okay, forget it. I knew there was a catch to it. I wonder who it belonged to. Some king. Say, Miss Winters, where did you find it? Well, I don't think I should tell you. Why not? You told me it was on a beach. Well, you might run down and pick up all the others that are there. There are more? There are thousands of them. They're scattered all over the beach like silver dust. Big ones, giant ones, tiny ones, fat ones, thin, thin ones, all sizes and shapes. But I'm serious. Well, I'll tell you how to find it. Look in your crystal ball. You don't think I can. Vicky, are you through with David's lessons? Yes. Would you come down to the drawing room? I want to talk with you for a moment. Of course. Sit down, Vicky. Now, Vicky, I'm going to come right to the point. Do you remember our conversation we had one time shortly ago about your leaving Collingwood? To work for your friends in Florida. Yes, that's right. I, I thought it would come as a welcome change for you. And I said that I didn't want to leave. Well, but I know, but since then we've become much more friendly and... I have become proportionately concerned for your welfare. Well, I still haven't changed my mind. That phone call a minute ago, it was from Burke Devlin. He asked me to meet him in town, and I did. What's that got to do with my leaving? He has made another threat against us. Burke's quarrel is with you and your sister, not with me. But, Vicky, don't you understand? You live here with us. That's all that matters to Burke. How can he hurt me? I don't own anything here. How can you be so stubborn? Look, Vicky. I think my sister was wrong in persuading you to stay on here. I don't want to seem ungrateful, Roger, but Listen I... Listen to me. Just leave. If it'll help, I'll give you two or three thousand dollars to make up for all that you've gone through. Winters! I know the answer. I know it! David, this is a private conversation. But this is important. It'll have to wait. It doesn't matter. I do appreciate your offer. But I'm going to stay. You won't change your mind? I don't think so. the pen. I want it to be our secret, just yours and mine. What secret? I know where you found it. Well, of course you do. I told you it was on the beach. Yes, but you didn't say what beach, and I know it was at Lookout Point. Well, how did you find that out? I did what you told me to do. I looked in my crystal ball. Well, it was just a lucky guess. No, it wasn't. My crystal ball told me you found it at Lookout Point, and that's where you did. <laughs> notebook and pen, but the pen's gone. No, it's not. It's right over there. Where? Can't you see anything? I put it right here. 
I'm sure that's right where I put it. Well, you must be mistaken. But I know I put it right there. I think I did. Nobody would just walk in here and take the pants. So it must be somewhere in the room. Help me look for it, will you, David? talking about ghosts and widows again. Why not? Disappeared, didn't it? Why couldn't they have taken it? Because they don't have any use for fountain pens. But little boys do. You think I took it? No, I don't think so. I think you might have borrowed it. I didn't steal your pen. I didn't say steal. I said borrow. And you and I both know that you have a habit of borrowing things. I didn't take it. Then who did? What about my father? Why don't you blame him while you're at it? Because he was in the drawing room with me. He wasn't there all the time. When I came down to tell you, he went up, he went out. So I came up here and took it. I bet he did it. You're terrible. You really are. You'll blame anybody but yourself. I don't care. It wasn't me. Well, it certainly wasn't your father. Let's get that straight. You think you can go around blaming me for everything that happens around here? Well, you can't. I can blame you for the things you do. Hey, that's, like, that's all you ever like to do, is get me in trouble. I'd like to get my pen back. Now, if you'll just show it to me, then I'll promise to forget the whole thing. So why don't you look in there? That's the closed-off section. What for? Well, that's where the ghosts live. That's where they must have taken it. I'm sure they would have put Whatever's it... Whatever's going on up here? It sounds like a riot. A private affair between David and me. Well, it didn't sound private from downstairs. What's wrong? She's trying to blame me for stealing her pen, and I didn't. Your pen? Yes, it was in David's room when I went downstairs, and when I came back, it was gone. Well, I can't help it if it disappeared. Things don't disappear, Oh, David. Vicky, please stop it. I'm sick and tired of this continuous bickering with David. Well, so am I. Well, now, if it's simply a matter of a pen, I'll be happy and delighted to buy you another one, just to get the whole matter settled. That's not the point. David, did you take her pen? No. Well, that's good enough for me, son. I should think it would be good enough for you. When you have a chance, Vicky, I'd like to see you in the drawing room. He, he stuck up for me. Yes, I know. You see, I thought he was your friend. And he isn't. He is not.
Coffee man? <laughs> well, if it isn't Joe Haskell, the big fish tycoon. Oh. oh, all right. The little fish tycoon. I forgot that the Collins cannery deals only in sardines. Little fish, Maggie, from which big money is made, and it's all poured into a, a dead castle on a dead hill. Hey, this is one of your bitter days. Something's missing. You're right. Common sense. No, oh, from this. Coffee cup without a saucer. Oh. Not possible. So I'm a terrible, terrible waiter. There you go, ma'am. Joe Haskell at your service. Hey, you better not let Carolyn Stoddard hear you say that. At this moment, she couldn't care less. And she's the one without any common sense. You know what she said to me today, Maggie? She said, don't ever speak to me again. Mm. And she meant it. Sure, for about five or ten minutes. Mm -hmm. How's the job coming along? Oh, okay. I was offered a promotion today. You were? Hey, that's great. Turned it down. Well, I guess you had your reasons. Yep. Let me guess. Mrs. Stoddard offered you a better job at the cannery, and you turned it down because you want to buy your own fishing boat and be independent, right? You think I'm crazy? Not if it's what you really want. You know, you'd think after all this time that, that Carolyn would understand how I felt. After all, I've been talking about this boat for, for years. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, like some brand new thing to her. she angry because you turned down the job? That's what she said. If you want to be independent, be independent without me. Or something like that. Maggie, you know, I just don't think that Carolyn and I are ever going to understand each other. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm better off recognizing it now. But you love her, Joe. How can I love her? I, I don't even know what she is from one day to the next. Maggie, what do you think I ought to do? <laughs> well, there are a couple of things you can do. A, you can beat her over the head and force her to marry you. Or B, you can sit in your room and sulk. Or C, you can find yourself a new girl. <laughs> I'll put a donut to go with the coffee. Oh, yes, Vicky. It's about that silly business upstairs with a pen. I wanted to apologize for the way I spoke to you. Well, it did seem a little strange. David steals my property and I'm accused of bickering. Are you quite certain David took your pen? It was gone when I came back to the room. No one else could have done it. Well, besides me, of course. You just can't let him go on like this. Vicky, you told me not so long ago that you were anxious to have David's confidence. Are you quite sure that... Accusing him of stealing is the best way to go about it. But he did take it. Well, even so, perhaps this is one time that you should overlook it. I want David to like me. But I'm not going to overlook this kind of behavior. Oh, come, Vicky. Why make so much fuss over a fountain pen? It's not as though you'd gone out and bought it yourself. <laughs>